Okay. I'm going to refresh here. Okay. All right, everyone. So, how is it your Saturday? How was the week? Uh, for us, uh, it's a great Saturday because uh, this is the actually the 10th episode of the Saturday Night Lockdown. And uh, I want to thank you for following, uh, for following us and supporting us. It's uh, it's great the the feedback that we are having and uh, it's unbelievable and overwhelming the support that we are getting. I already see people commenting on YouTube, hey guys, people from Czech Republic, from all over the world. Hi hi, uh, Masami from Japan already there. Ciao everyone, and let me refresh also the Facebook page so we can check the comments as well. Just give me a second. Hello, hello. I see Jimmy, Jason, hi. People from Singapore and from all over the world. So again, thank you very much for supporting us. And um, I want to thank uh, Mike from Nuclear Blast for, uh, for um, helping us with this podcast. And Francesco is directing the show. As always, good morning, Joy. And uh, hi, hi. Tech Zombie can ask something. You can ask whatever you like. All right. So today we have two great uh, artists, two great guests. Um, the first one needs no presentation. He is, uh, as I said in the story, is an icon, a legend uh, in death metal. Um, his band inspired Flash God so much, and um, you know, uh, I really. I'm, I'm, you know, I have no words. I'm so happy that he, he agreed to be with us in the Saturday Night Lockdown. So, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr. Carl Sanders from Nile. Hey, how's it going, guys? Hey, man, how are you doing? Oh, good. Doing great. How are you doing? Uh, I'm good. I'm good. Uh, restarting with normal life, more or less. Trying my best. <laughs> nice, nice. How is it there? Uh, things are so fucked up here. Yeah. They're really fucked up. Yeah. Yeah. First the virus, now you have like a lot of issues, let's say. <laughs> yeah, it's race riots. Uh, you yeah. know, the police brutality thing. It's just, it's insane. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's really crazy times here. I feel like we've time traveled back to the days of Martin Luther King and Malcolm X. Yeah, I know. Yeah, it's uh, it's very very weird moment for humanity. First the virus, now we have this, and uh, like I think that all these are consequences of problems that we didn't want to face as human race. But yeah, we I, I really hope that we are gonna uh, be over with all this uh, as better human beings after all this. Like I mean. The oldest time that we had to think about who we are and what we are doing, uh, I really hope that this is going to help humanity and uh, to heal and to progress as it was to, supposed to be. Uh, so, uh, what are you doing now in uh, at home? You are in your home studio. Yeah, I'm home studio, having some morning coffee. Coffee yeah, shop. Yeah, yeah. Uh, where are you from, exactly? Well, uh, I'm living in Greenville, South Carolina. Uh, I'm originally from San Francisco, California, but I've been here for quite a while now. Yeah, you moved East Coast. <laughs> we went East Coast style. All right, and um, and you know what? What did you do in this uh, in this like time off that we the extra time off that we got? Did you, you compose? Know. Did you work on stuff? <laughs> I started off going, okay, this would be a great uh, time to write some Nile songs, and so I did. Um, and I've been practicing like a maniac, uh, you know. Uh, but then I got going on my solo project, uh, the awesome. Orient record, um, which took a little bit to get in the groove because it's a totally different mindset, uh, mm -hmm. you know, for that music than, you know, what I normally do with Nile and death metal. It's a whole different way of thinking. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. Did, did you feel like inspired in these dark times or? 
No, I, I felt very uninspired for, for at first, like, you know, hopelessness and, you know, despair. What's going to happen to our world? What's going to happen to our music scene? Um, you know, those, those thoughts are really hard to push out of your brain, especially if you watch the news. Like, if you watch yeah. too much news, that shit will rot your brain and turn you into a scared little animal. Um, so I don't watch yeah. the news anymore I, I like watch five minutes and that's it yeah uh, i i heard this from many people like many people start stop to you know get informed by the news because it's like too much to process yeah every day a lot is. of it's disinformation anyway yeah um, i think uh here in the states the last couple of years the the political agendas you know from bipartisan you know mm -hmm. uh, census it's it's not helpful I, i i think it's very unhealthy so yeah fuck the news i'm gonna play guitar <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah well in the end is what we are you know uh is what we have to do like uh, you know produce music and entertain people as much as we can in this moment this, that's what i was we're discussing about this before we were Uh, on air. I mean, like, uh, what we can do right now is try to stay in touch with people, become better artists, be practice and improve, uh, produce new music and, you know, try to deliver to people uh, something new, maybe something better. I don't know. That's I think you're exactly right. Uh, that's why, you know, whatever God you want to believe in, that's why God put us here. Our, our purpose is to play music for other people, to improve their lives, to give them something to do, to bring something new to them. That's, yeah. that's really our, our only one redeeming quality or purpose of why we're here, is to bring mm -hmm. music, life, and happiness Even if yeah. that happiness, you know, we're, we're, we're all in, in a very extreme mental genre, so It's not necessarily happy music, but listening to terrible, violent music makes me happy, right? And, and I think that's like a common thread with, with all of us. We all love that extreme mm -hmm. violence. You know, it's, it's something that brings us, you know, personal joy. Absolutely. I've seen people like going crazy, sending a lot of... Uh, Congratulations, people from Argentina. Uh, there is a guy asking uh, about, um, uh, can you tell us about your experiences in India? <laughs> India was actually really fucking cool. Uh, we played yeah. the, the Bangalore Metal Fest. Um, mm -hmm. And they had actually built like this great stage set with, uh, with pyramid walls and statues wow. of the like, Egyptian gods and uh, just really went to an incredible amount of effort. And the festival wasn't a big festival, you know, by European standards. It was like 2,500 people. Wow. But they put so much effort into this show that it was really just an amazing thing. The people there were so appreciative. Um, you know yourself, like when you go to countries that don't get as much metal, then mm -hmm. the fans, you know, they really have a high level of appreciation for what, what you're bringing them. And that always makes for an incredibly intense show. Oh, my God. Awesome. So you got a, like a full, produ a full Nile production there, like with statues. With... <laughs> oh, so that, that's great. I mean, yeah, like yeah. what... I i remember i recall that uh one of the few times in our career that we got pyros was in india as well right <laughs> yeah yeah they, we we just uh we went there and um carcass was at the lining and we were opening and all of a sudden like pyros and it was like wow awesome you know and yeah, uh, they, they, yeah as you said they are so hungry for metal for shows like especially like foreign bands going there and um that that is that is great i have like very mixed feelings uh memories from india because i really enjoyed the show but at the same time i was shitting my pants <laughs> because uh, 
I got sick just uh, one like one day before leaving, and uh, as soon as we arrived, there was no way of healing there. Like everything was right. so spicy, and uh, so I couldn't eat anything, and uh, it was like a nightmare. Uh, but uh, at the same time, I have really cool memories about the organization and everything. I really hope to, to go back to India as soon yeah, as possible. Too. I feel the yeah. same way. <laughs> it's a it's a great it's a great place. Uh, yeah, this guy, I agree with Carl 100% about watching the news. <laughs> People from <laughs> Venezuela, yeah, throw away your television. Yeah. <laughs> or, <laughs> all right, so, um, uh, Vile Nilotic Rides is a killer uh, album. Uh, been listening to Seven Hours of War a ton. So, people from Brazil also. So they are asking if you like video games. What, what do you have like uh, extra hobbies or or you just play guitar like twenty four hour a week? <laughs> um, well, uh, actually, I've been playing the new Doom Eternal lately. Uh, holy fucking Christ! What a what a video! <laughs> it's the spectacular, grandiose, epic, hellish, beautiful nightmare. Um, I also uh, play COD two. Which is like a really old school game, but I play multiplayer online at mm -hmm. night. Um, the it's such an incredible, fast-paced, fun game. Um, it's really old school. It's not like the new Call of Duty, uh, which is like yeah. it's you know, overblown and it's, there's a lot of stuff that's annoying about it. But COD Two is so old school that it's a simple game, so it runs blazing fast on any computer. Um, and there's guys that have been playing it for fucking 10 years. So it's just I, insane. I, Matt. I can see people saying doom forever. I knew Carlo will say doom, doom. <laughs> so it's like, yeah, doom eternal. Yeah. Yeah. They are, they are going crazy for this. Like <laughs> also this guy is asking, uh, when, if you ever played, did you ever play the Ireland? Do you remember? Yeah. We've been to Ireland a bunch of times. A yeah. bunch of times. So you miss them. And you okay. should go watch them play. All right. Yeah. Which band has influenced you? Which this band? Is, so which many bands. bands. So yeah. many bands. So many bands. Um, uh, you know, Immolation. Uh, there's a, a constant source of inspiration. Um, yeah. Um, I also listen to like old, 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 old ancient stuff that people don't really listen to anymore. Uh, uh, you, you mean like uh, like death metal stuff or like in like, general, like rock yeah. stuff? I like I like music that was made before the age of computers. Um, okay. Uh, back when you actually had to like play, like you hit record and everybody plays together. Mm -hmm. um, it's not assembled, right, after the fact. That's the shit that I love. Like, shit from the 70s, the 60s, uh, oh. when people actually had to play and sing and fucking do it. Yeah, yeah. That's what I, I like. Yeah, it was a totally different um, atmosphere and energy in the music for this, I guess. Like... Mm -hmm. I'm I I like experienced something like this for a very short time of my career. Then you know everything was like computer and Skype and you know band members everywhere in the world. Actually, we are pretty pretty lucky so far. Like my band members more or less live not that far from where I live. But for example, you have um, you have um, uh, George in Greece, and I think it's when you like the writing process has to be done like on the on, on on the internet of, of course. course like yeah, yeah that's true. and now i'm experiencing something like that because my new drummer he is from from he lives in vienna so it's the first time that i done like go in the studio and you know do stuff uh, like up front but um it's it's interesting it's like the the writing process is the same but it's a different way like when you go in the same room and you dis you discuss, you try to find the the best option, you know, just 
by chatting, like confronting yourself. You know, it's a different way. Yeah, Instead I, of I, sending emails with pro productions. <laughs> I know, man. Yeah, like the this modern way of working, it, it cuts out like the stuff that you didn't plan for, the unexpected, the inexplicable, the happy accidents, the like, oh my God, did you hear what we just did? I hope somebody had record going. Like that. That's the fucking amazing fucking shit. The shit you didn't intend to do, the stuff that just came from the metal gods giving you. <laughs> like a gift. Like a gift. It is a gift. Yeah. You know, I, I don't like to take credit for it. You know, because uh, it it's, comes from, I think, a higher plane, a higher power. There's, there's moments of true inspiration. Uh, and I think you have to be willing to accept them, to be open to them, to realize that, you know, hey, I'm just a person and I can work hard mm -hmm. my craft. But true inspiration, you can't take it for granted. No, yeah, absolutely. Sometimes it's like magical thing, you know, <laughs> like what is your uh, favorite song to play live? My favorite song to play live? Yeah. I got so many. All of them. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't know. You know, I like different ones for different things. Like, you know, we, when we play Sarcophagus. Um, okay. And I, and I hear the crowd, like, singing along with it. That's like, dude. Yeah. Like some holy communion um, of, of, you know, metal you know. like I remember uh, we met, uh, what was it? It was Worcester. You were on tour with uh, my other band, like uh, the band I was in before, uh, our fans, they were with right. you guys. Right. And you were on tour with uh, the Black Delia Murder, and you were playing uh, this festival. It's uh, Massachusetts Death Metal Death Fest or something like that in Worcester. Yep. And I, I remember like, all the people uh, screaming on uh, Black Seeds of Vengeance. <laughs> like, it, it was loud, man. It was incredible. Dude, yeah. when you get all those people united together yeah. for just to enjoy a metal moment together, dude, yeah. that's powerful. You can yeah. feel that human electric energy, like, just circling through the room. It's fucking magic. It's it's like voodoo. Uh That's the fucking shit that I love. Yeah, yeah. It's like, yeah, yeah. it's probably the, the best that can happen to a musician, you know, when you have like this, like immediate feedback. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, when I was playing drums, I didn't feel it like that much because I was super, you know, focused on what I was doing. I couldn't, I never enjoyed that much, like performing. Like when I see George, for example, performing, for him, everything is easy. You know, I had to, I was struggling behind the drum kit, you know, it's like, I have to be focused on what I'm doing. But uh, for him, you know, I think it's, it's, uh, for him, it's easy to enjoy and like, uh, leave the moment and play without thinking that much. For me, it was, it was a little bit harder. Uh, but now, uh, when I feel the people like screaming or singing along, it's, Yeah, probably the best thing, and that is probably the, the, the reason why I still do it. I mean, like, it's so cool. Right on. Uh, you know, you, you make me laugh. George does make it look easy, but <laughs> just making it look easy. What George Coleus is doing back there is not an easy job. That's an incredibly tough job. You know, everything's on the click, and he's... He's locked down, right? Yeah. If he gets off, the whole song crashes. So yeah. he can't look, he can't fuck up. It's not yeah. allowed. <laughs> yeah, but you know, I was um, if uh, okay, every time I, I, I've seen him playing, you know, it, it looks so easy for him. You know, I was jealous. I was like, fuck. But it is yeah. it's been doing that for uh, so long, and now as this guy said, he has three legs and six arms. Uh, He he works so hard for it. Um, you know, he's he's really earned that status as a drum master because that's what he is. He is the real thing. Uh, yeah, yeah. 
and yeah. you can tell because you you got like very great drummers in your you know in the history of Nile so like also visionary drummers like mm -hmm. I think Peter Mora is a visionary drummer <laughs> yeah like, he is he's, uh, like, he's uh, a great guy too uh, incredible yeah. person and, and such a good person I, I love that guy like a brother mm -hmm. yeah but um, I mean like the contribution is like like even in uh in the early days, it was it was great? I mean, like it was, like you you did some very cool stuff at the very beginning. But when you release um, like the the first album, Annihilation with uh, with George, I was like, wow, it's, this is the next level. I mean, like <laughs> I think uh, me and Julio from our uh, from Julio from our fans, I think we listened to that album and Ethifalic. I two millions time in the car, head banging alone, like, <laughs> it's like so, right yeah, yeah. It that, that influenced us so much, like our fans and Flash. Yeah, well, I really like what you're doing uh, with everything, with all the different influences you pull together and and just fucking turn it into this fucking blinding vision of, yeah, it's it's really amazing what you guys have done. But have you ever thought to be so so influential when you while you were doing those albums back in the days? Like, did you were have you did you realize that while doing that? You know, people would say that to me, but I would ignore them because I, I think if you think about those things, then you're not thinking about what you're supposed to be doing, which is making music. Uh, and bringing it to the people. Those, you know, if you think about, you know, those other fucking things, it's like setting yourself up to trip over your own feet. Um, so I'd rather just stay focused on, on my job uh, and try and give people what it is that they actually pay for. If somebody buys a CD, right, I believe that they have a reasonable expectation to hear some new music on it. You know, there has to be a reason. If you go to a show, then I, I think uh, you should be able to actually see that show and see people giving their all. Um, so it's, it's really about loyalty and, and, you know, respect for the fans. You know, that's, that's what my that's, focus is. That's great to hear, man. Like, um, yeah, you are, that's why you became a legend, probably. <laughs> and I know, like, this, uh, honestly, you know, like, uh, like, cre in, in your creative process and as a musician, you know, whenever you go on stage, you want to deliver, like, 100%. It's uh, something that I admire, and uh, I think that makes a big difference and creates the legend, you know, that th this behavior, you know, so... I but think yeah. death metal fans uh, know what they're looking at. They know what they're listening to. They didn't come to this music by accident. Uh, they know what they're they're looking at. And also they're standing. The audience is right here, two or three feet away from you. They're right there with you. So you better give them the real thing. You know, yeah. give them honestly 100% of whatever it is you have to give them because they will know. They will know, man. They can see right through all the bullshit of, of like, you know, pop music mentality. They see yeah. through all that bullshit in the first place. That's why they're listening to extreme metal. So I think you have to respect that audience. Yeah. Uh, yep. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, I agree, and uh, yeah, as I said, you know, I really admire you for this. Uh, we have a, I, this is a very cool question uh, because you know when I started uh, playing metal, uh, Nile was already there, and we were looking up to you like a lot. As I said, you inspired us like musical wise. Uh, it's such a big influence in our style, uh, but you know. I always ask myself, I was for you. And this guy's like, can you talk about the beginning of Nile? You know, when you started, how was it? Like, 
it was a it was early 90s so no internet no it was more or less cassette and vinyls first cds here and there distros i think that if starting nile in 93 it was a visionary thing you know you know what i mean like well, we uh, we were convinced we had no hope of ever succeeding anyway. So we were just going to do what we wanted to do, right? Make make our music. So you, uh, you didn't have like any expectation. No, no uh, we were already grown adults, like thirty years old uh, at that okay. time, right? So we'd already had a lot of young, hopeful dreams be fucking smashed. Mm -hmm. uh, so we we didn't have like delusions or illusions of grandeur and stardom we didn't give a fuck about any of that because it, it seemed a far-fetched concept anywhere we're a band from greenville south carolina mm -hmm. uh, and we're playing you know some kind of extreme metal uh and then you throw in the egyptian theme is like you know this is a pretty hopeless idea but i think that's <laughs> it's unbelievable to hear you say this <laughs> Unbelievable, yeah. It was liberating, right? If you don't believe that the world is going to care about what you do, right, and you do whatever you want to do, then that's really a lot of creative change just thrown off. Like, we can do whatever we want. Okay, what do we want to do? What could we do? Uh, the Nephron Kai album uh, is basically a grand expression of what could we do? What could we do? <laughs> It's a, you were trying. Yeah, we were, we were just going for it. You know, no yeah. holds barred, no rules, because uh, we didn't believe any rules applied to us, right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, and, uh, the little label that we had at the time, uh, Visceral Records, was a small little label uh, run by one guy, and he didn't care uh, what we did, just liked what we were doing. So... There was no one to tell us what we couldn't do. Yeah. So, wow. Then, that's what we could do. Unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. It's it's crazy. You know? I mean, like, first of all, it gives a uh, big hope to all the musicians that maybe see their first band going, you know, not that well. That you, you know, when whenever you, you know, you you cannot expect anything from music interested anymore you know things change all of a sudden and you become uh one of the top death metal bands in the world like boom like this i mean like of course it required a lot of effort and uh you know it's it's a long story it's not something that you know pops out like that but still right. it didn't happen overnight man there was a yeah lot it didn't happen yeah so but still but still out on tour yeah. But I think that you uh, had the perception that things were going in the right direction. I mean, like, uh, when you released the first album and you started touring and doing shows and, you know, things were, you know, growing. Because for you, the things were growing already, you know, like, at, the, at, you know, in the late 90s, you know, and Nile was already a thing, you know. When, right. when was your first... Um, tour in uh, in Europe when did you do that that was uh 99 um we so played pretty, pretty soon yeah uh we had started touring like in 97 98 uh we did seven US tours for Nefrenka we toured so much making no money that we we're all bankrupt we had to <laughs> of cities so you know but we were broke but we didn't care <laughs> We were doing what we loved, and we we weren't going to give up. You know, this was our one shot, right? We're already, you know, in our thirties and seeing a lot of things, you know, about music careers mm -hmm. that just, you know, fallen by the wayside. This band didn't make it. This band didn't make it. That band didn't make it. That didn't. The roadside is littered with bands that did nothing. So, given that this was our, our, like, what we perceived our one chance to be in this lifetime, if we're going for it, right, we're going to fucking do it. <laughs> Incredible. 
I don't know. Yeah, uh, I see. Uh, like I remember that. Uh, like what was it in two thousand? Uh, I think the first time I've seen you was in two thousand four for annihilation. Mm. It was like a metal EC or something like that tour. It was <laughs> like very very old. Uh, yeah, well, unbelievable. I I I I, I, I uh, miss those times. I miss those times. I wasn't I wasn't a musician. I was I didn't have a band. Like I was just starting back then. But I remember going to shows. Uh, you know, like driving 500 kilometers just to 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 go to shows. And the shows were still packed. A lot of people there. It nice. was great. It was great. <laughs> Absolutely. So Ramses, bringer of war. Yes. Okay. Uh, two questions for Carl. Uh, favorite metal genre. Favorite metal genre. Favorite metal genre. Yeah, sorry for my pronunciation. <laughs> it's like Italian. I think it sounds weird for you, but you know. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 go, ahead. Best. go ahead. Sorry. I try. I'm trying my best with my pronunciation. <laughs> You're doing great, man. Uh, uh, to answer the question. Uh, you know, I, I like my genre. You know, what we're doing, what Nile, what Flesh God does. Fucking Crisian. Immolation. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's the fucking shit I love. Yeah, and, uh, and uh, the least favorite genre of metal. What you don't like. Uh, you know, I, I I don't like pop metal. Uh, oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Like that's... Yeah, super uh, like plastic, uh, if, plastic metal. Plastic metal that sounds like manufactured, like you you assembled it uh, according to instructions you downloaded on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah a, I, I don't like those with bands. Formulas. No formulas. Fuck formulas. Yeah, absolutely. The, it, this guy said like, uh, yeah, uh, creative freedom. Yeah, you. That's what you were told. You you were talking about. You know, like have no, like, no limits. Uh, this one is uh, memories about the recording of uh, amongst the catacombs. Like, it's, <laughs> this is cool. Where did you record that? That was at the Sound Lab in Columbia, South Carolina, with Bob Moore. And I remember our budget for that entire record was uh, only $3,000, which wasn't enough to pay for studio time, right? So we could only afford one hotel room for all of us. So we're all like, you know, sleeping on the floor, uh, living down there. And uh, every couple of days we'd drive home because we were fucking hungry and broke. Uh, <laughs> Just to, yeah. So we spent about a month working on that record. And it was one of the best times of my life. Uh, because you know, that that sense of the chains are off. This is our chance to do something, and, and we're gonna fucking do it. We're gonna yeah. show the world what we can do, and that was an incredibly exciting time. Um, so at first, you didn't think that uh, the the Egyptian thing, as you called it, <laughs> was another a smart idea. No, I, I thought it was like a you know doomed to failure because at that time. Uh, all the bands were either copying Cannibal Corpse and Suffocation mm -hmm. or, you know, trying to be as black metal satanic as they possibly could. Mm -hmm. like, those were the two choices, right? If you were a band, you either did this thing or that thing. Yeah. And we looked at it and went, well, uh, you know, neither of those... Uh, Things are going to do it for us. What would make us happy? What's interesting to us? What What are we interested in? Um, yeah, it wasn't such a good idea, but it worked out fine. Now I see plenty of bands doing it. Yeah, I think that, yeah, you open them like it's um, an open minded approach, you know, like the same that we have. Like, yeah, of course, like after many years, uh, I would say that uh, the, there, it wasn't that different when we started, you know, like it, it was more like, like every brutal Florida style, you know, or 
more satanic and mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. And we didn't feel comfortable because right. we were like, uh, we, we liked a lot like melodic music. And so mo a lot of melodic uh, European death metal. And uh, at the same time, you know, we weren't satanic at all. Like we are all rationalists, so we couldn't talk about this stuff like at all. So as uh, we were like, okay, yeah, uh, what's our, our, you know, the, what's the thing that we really love beside metal, beside playing death metal? And, and we thought like, why don't we mix these two things? And you know, it became something. And uh, but. Uh, we learned from a band like Nile that to, the the thing is to be you have to I wouldn't say you have to but it's it's great if you are unique if you are special you know yes that's fine you know and uh, and every time you know we go on stage and and people you know witness this kind of like atmospheric theatrical thing and they perceive like the whole entertainment behind. It's mm -hmm. great, you know. That's so, uh, I I I think that uh, yeah, this influenced us, you know, in the in our choices, you know, in our musical path. So thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I really like what you've done with it. You really, you know, have expanded, you know, and, and brought in so many things. It's it's an entire spectacle what you guys mm -hmm. did. Will Nile, uh, Will Nile record a show for a live album DVD anytime? <laughs> I get asked this all the time. You know, we're we're totally willing to do it. Uh, you know, if we can talk nuclear blast into it, then then maybe it could happen. But every time we bring it up, they they just ignore us. They they don't even bother answering it anymore. I know it's tough. You know, when we did uh, like we did something like that, we released it with the album. And nowadays, it's not that easy to uh, to sell like this kind of stuff, especially after YouTube and all the shows that uh, now the things that is coming up after the lockdown is this um, live streaming thing. But the, I I do believe it's complicated for you guys because George uh, is uh, in Greece. Yeah, it's it's been the same for us with uh, with Eugene. You know, like. It's not that easy when you're the 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 all the, the older band is living in the same place, you know. It's yeah, it becomes it's so very expensive also, like very risky because you have to fly people and arrange a thing. It's a, it's not that easy. Like fans ask, like, why don't you do that? It's like, yeah, we would like, but you know, it's not that easy. That simple, yeah, not that simple. Not at all. Yeah. But yeah, they were doing, they will, they will, and uh, they will, uh, you should do something like the, like uh, uh, Pink Floyd did in Pompeii or in Venice, you should do, you should do it in Egypt, you know, like uh, <laughs> with the real pyramids behind you, like. Yeah, dude, I've, I've brought that idea up so many times uh, to management and then they get out the calculator and they go, okay. Plane tickets for six people, maybe seven, rent sound gear, rent video gear, and then there's this big number. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, who's going to pay for this? Yeah, yeah. I know, I know. But yeah, I, it's going gonna, it's gonna to happen. I, I want to, you know, I want to tell the people that it's going to happen. So people from Norway, you see uh, this guy, I will buy the live DVD by Nile, you know, <laughs> of course. So you should tell Nuclear Bust that it's going to happen. So Maybe Mike is gonna, listening. It's going to be yeah. a, like Eastern the green light, did you say that? <laughs> yeah, Mike, if Mike's listening, hey, put in a good word for us. There's somebody on YouTube that will buy. This one person will buy. And that makes the yeah. whole thing financially viable. This is a, this is a dream come true uh, for you. I saw Nile open for King Diamond in 2006 at out of blue out of uh, out of blues uh, Cleveland. Nice House of Blues in Cleveland. What a great fucking venue! Yeah, and also this saying that was a great show. I see Happy commenting. Um, 
Did you see the, the flyer? Of course, you know, you, you got the design, the caricature. Did you like it? Yeah, yeah, it's a lot of fun. Uh, my wife showed it to me, and I was like, all wow. right, somebody worked really hard on this. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's, um, yeah, it's done by, uh, by this girl from uh, UK. She's a good friend of us, a good friend of mine, and she's helping us with all the um, flyers on all these designs. And uh, I usually uh, do this promo thing for her because we need to support young artists. So uh, if you want to support her, you go to uh, patreon.com uh, slash art or on Instagram and uh, you can support her. You can ask her to draw your caricature, to work, you know, make something for you. And uh, it's very appreciated if you go there because she's very young and very talented. So patreon.com slash art. All right. So, yes. Let's move on, King Diamond. Yes, playing in the Middle East in Dubai. Yeah, that would be great. And we never played there. Man, it's it's an incredible place to go. If you get yeah. the chance to go to Dubai, you have to go. You have to go. Yeah, I I I, I believe so. Like well, all these people are also like very. I think they are looking for a metal show. So not much is happening there. So. Yeah, if you get the chance, fucking go. But be ready. Uh, according to the time of year, it can be fucking hot there. When we were there, it was so hot that <laughs> trees on the side of the road were catching on fire. That's how hot it was. <laughs> wow. Unbelievable. Incredible. Um, yeah, I think more or less like Egypt. is. <laughs> <laughs> so it would be like perfect. Uh, this guy is uh, talking about the fact that you are a karate, <laughs> a, a karate fan. Did you practice karate during this lockdown? Uh, not during the lockdown, no. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, uh, I, I retired uh, from active. Uh, I went as high as fourth degree black belt. Um, wow. but my wrists were really starting to hurt, um, mm -hmm. having lots of problems with my wrists and, and I need my wrists to play guitar. So it's starting to become a choice with, you know, either I can play guitar or I can do martial arts. Um, and that's not really a choice. Um, if, if I'm faced with that choice, it's going to be guitar. Um, so All right. I had to put that on, you know. So you, but you don't practice like kata stuff like alone at home or stuff like that, like for like mental health. <laughs> uh, well, you know, probably if I did, I would be more mentally healthy. Um, but okay. most just doing physical therapy. I've been going every, two times a week to heal my wrists mm -hmm. and playing a shitload of guitar lately. Um, you know, maybe, maybe it, some other day in the future, uh, I might take it back up again, but not right now. Okay, cool. And uh, this is one uh, a question I wanted to ask when we were talking about the you know the beginning. What are they? Um, because you are a riff master. Many people <laughs> said that you are the best, like uh, uh, the riff master. And I do believe that you know the the thing like this. As I said, there's a lot of of things that we. Uh, included in your music that are like typical null stuff, especially in riffing. Uh, what are who are your favorite guitar players? Who inspired you, like as a as a guitar player? You know, uh, primarily two guys, uh, mm -hmm. Ruby Roth and Robin Trower. Okay, you know, which are two really old names, <laughs> but. Yeah. Uh, you know, that's, that's who I really like. Uh, Robin Trower has this ability to bend minds with, with just even the simplest notes. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, where the notes and the expression become more than just notes. On mm -hmm. Like, the difference between, you know, you can punch a typewriter or a keyboard. <laughs> yeah. A lot of, you know, notes, right? Mm -hmm. Or, like... 
what Robin Trower does, you know, he does something with your soul in those notes. It's it's more than just lots of notes. It's like something beyond that. Something yeah. communicating something of the soul. Uh, you know, I, I think that's like a higher purpose. You know, what is our music yeah. doing, right? What are we what are we hoping to achieve with it? And and I think the idea of touching, you know, reaching out and communicating with other people, you know, mm -hmm. that's, that's what it's all about. Yeah, there's no, it's like universal language. Mm -hmm. And also like, like the, you, you touch feelings, you create uh, something, you leave something whenever you play. So yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, absolutely. And uh, this guy is asking, how long do you guys practice guitar? Me, not that much. I want to be <laughs> honest. I'm a lazy motherfucker. How much uh, do you practice? He said a lot. A lot. Um, yeah, I play good. so much. I, I take lessons still. Every moment that I don't have to be doing something else. You play I'm, guitar. I'm playing guitar. Yeah. Wow, that's that's awesome. And um, uh, let's go let's go back to the plans before because it's already uh, I, time flies. It's already forty five minutes that we are on air. Wow! And uh, I don't want to bother you like any longer. Like uh, if you give me like some extra five minutes just to say goodbye, and uh, I wanted you to know what were uh, your plans before the lockdown. Did you have like tours that you have to cancel or stuff like that, and how you are thinking to reschedule all this stuff and also, I wanted to ask you if you have like um, an official merch store where people can uh, go and buy merchandise and support the band in these dark times. Um, yeah, we did have to cancel plenty of tours. Our, our Japan, Australia, New Zealand tour been been kicked down the road, uh, indefinitely postponed. Um, mm -hmm. All our European summer festivals have been kicked back to 2021. Um, okay. Our fall time U.S. tour uh, is still on the books. You know what situation will be in America. You know four months from now. You know who can say? I don't know. No. Um, so you you don't have like or an already postponed like a rebooked tour yet? Uh, no. Uh, probably. We had this fall tour planned for quite some time. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so if that has to be postponed, uh, I'm sure, you know, it'll kick into 2021, like, like everything else. Okay. And what about the merchandise? Do you have like a store, like, uh, like an official store where you sell your merchandise? You have links? Actually, uh, we do JSR merchandising. Okay. They got a website you can go. You can also go to Razzmatazz, uh, if you're In on Europe. the side. Yeah, or Midwest okay. last uh, in Europe. Yeah. Okay. They sell our stuff too. Yeah, yeah. It's very important that uh, I always uh, remind people that right right now, we, you know, like uh, all musicians make money uh, with shows and going on tour. So the only way to make some money and carry on uh, is to to get some money from merch sales and. Uh, Yep. So, as Carl said, you know, if you want to buy some uh, official merchandise for Nile, you go to JSR um, for United States, Rasmataz for Europe, and uh, of course, you can buy all the music and some extra merchandise on Nuclear Blast. You just, you know, type Nile official merchandise, and you'll find. Yeah, you get a mountain uh, of stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you get a lot of a lot of stuff. All right, so thank you, thank you very much. I, I don't want to bother you any longer because it's morning, and uh, I, I'm I'm so happy that you that you joined me, and uh, it's been an honor and a pleasure to to have you on in this like small podcast. I'm I'm very proud of this, and I'm very happy that uh, such iconic and legendary musicians join me, and uh, that's great. Uh, like. The the whole like like the whole common feed is going crazy. Like uh, we got like, a lot of questions, a lot of comments. Thank you for commenting. I we didn't have time for 
for everybody, but uh, we will uh, we will invite Carl once again in the future to talk a little bit more. Thank you so much, man. It's It's been a lot of fun participating. I, I think what you're doing is a great thing here. And I wish you all the fucking success with it. Thanks. All right. So let me invite, before I let you go, uh, let me invite um, Tuomas from Walfart, who is the next guest of uh, today's episode. Hi, hi, Tuomas. How are you doing? I'm good. You're good? I'm in I'm Finland. Good. Yeah. Yeah. So we, we, we are coming from a super hot place, uh, south, south or North Carolina. It's like South. You, Carl, South Carolina? Oh, South Carolina. So from South Carolina, which is like probably now 35 degrees Celsius. Yeah, Two? it's fucking hot here. How is, it, how is it in Finland? Oh, the summer is just beginning, so it's, it's about 20, so it's not... Wow, 20. Yeah, wow. yeah. A, a really short summer is just beginning, so now it's like a normal weather. Before wow. we 20, 20 in Finland right now means that global warming is a thing. <laughs> Yeah, usually it would be minus 10, but... Uh. All right. So, Carl, thank you very much once again. Uh, it's, been a, it's been a pleasure. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Have a great day. Goodbye. All the best. <laughs> all right. So, Thomas, how are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. That was, uh, like I said, that was the most ent ent entertaining minutes of this day. <laughs> it's been rather boring times. Very yeah. exciting times in a way, way. So it was. Um, my day is getting better. Let's put it that way. Yeah, but then uh, you, you did you have like a very severe lockdown? I don't think so. Like was like at well, the beginning you got like one month of like heavy restrictions, but then uh, we were allowed to move freely inside Finland, like go to jobs and stuff like that. But all the restaurants, uh, venues. Gyms, uh, all those were closed. They actually started opening them this Friday. Mm -hmm. so, okay, so you're just restarting. Yeah. So, but the the overall, Finland was running pretty normally the whole time. We started the lockdown early enough, but of course, in our field of business, the heat is equal because the whole music industry went down in, mm -hmm. in one blow, and. Uh, I don't know why it, it, it is so, but Finland has probably the most amount of uh, summer festivals, at least in Scandinavian countries. But uh, mm -hmm. that's going to be a huge hit for the music industry. Like I think the biggest damage is still yet to yet to happen, even though the restrictions are getting like a looser, because all the festivals are gone. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's basically what it's happening here as well. I mean. As I said, uh, it's uh, what is going to happen is totally unpredictable. I I'm like a very uh, um, natural born optimist, and uh, I always say that uh, I'm very confident that uh, at least uh, the audience that we have is going to stay loyal, is going to follow us after all when when it's going to be over. You know, they are going to come to the shows with restrictions, masks, whatever. I'm pretty sure that. The, the problem is not going to be the crowd, the audience. Yeah. Because they are like the best fans uh, in all genres. Uh, but you know what? The, the industry itself, like the people working, you know, that this, all the like uh, venue owners, bookers, managers, they, they're, they've been very badly hit by this as well. And, I don't know how it's going to work, especially because they were, were going to suffer the same restrictions that we have and make the money out of a show nowadays not that easy uh, in normal conditions. So I'm expecting, you know, some weird shit going on <laughs> uh, with this, like, new rules that we have to respect until we get a vaccine and, like, the majority of people is vaccinated. So, yeah, it's a... Uh... Yeah, we, we were supposed to have a European tour starting in September, so really quickly, like, we were still like, it wasn't uh, cancelled yet, like uh, one and a half months ago, but already then, like, uh, the amount of new variables on the table, like, uh, half of the bus companies don't reply the emails, they don't know are they going to be able to survive, the prices went, like, quite highly up, 
naturally because they are just trying to survive without income. There is no business. And uh, yeah. who knows what the flights are going to be. One of the merchandise companies we used to use in Europe already announced that they're probably going to go down. Like mm -hmm. they don't know how they're going to survive. So it's not just like everything around the touring industry. It's not just the, the even just the venues or the audience. Uh, yeah. And those are the biggest factors. What um, like you said, it was a good point about the the fans and the audience. That's not something that we would need to worry about because it's a really strong community, and uh, they don't just follow the music style. The fans follow the band, so that chain is not going to be broken. Yeah, uh, absolutely. And uh, you know, that's the last hope that we have because at least we can try to survive this first moment in which we are tuning, you know, with this new yeah. rules and we can uh, find new ways to to make it work as a band, uh, as artists. Um, a good example is this podcast, you know, like, of course, it's free thing, but it helps uh, the band to stay active and it helps to spread the word and uh, get in touch with new fans. And um, another thing is the streaming uh from like let, let me like uh let's give some information to people okay so you guys released an album actually uh during the lockdown because it's something that you cannot stop that easy you know like you work for here on an album and then you know everything falls down and you have to find a way to make it work. So you re still release the album, and after that you did a, a concert, like a, the f I think the first live streaming concert, right? It was it was one of the first one. Well, I think there was two or three before us. Okay. That, yeah, like you said, that's a, yeah. You, it's not that easy to reschedule or stop. We actually had few of those meetings with the label and management. That can we actually postpone the release because things started to look. Every day was a little bit more complicated, like a prediction for the future. But it's, the machine was already running. The albums were sent to the distributor. So you can't just pull in the plug would be even more complicated. So we had to start thinking like what to come up to, to promote the album. Now the tours are gone. And we really wanted to do the virtual gig as fast as possible when it was still like a really new thing. And, and we got the really good media exposure for that. But... I, I truly hope that the old school style playing for the live audience would come back because it's so different. It's too different to me. Mm -hmm. I, I need the energy and the, the connection with the audience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, I, otherwise, I, it's just, it becomes just a technical production with no heart and soul, even though, we, of course, we play the music with the same passion, but it's just so weird. Because it's one way. Yeah. It's not two ways, you know. Yeah. Yeah, that's what scares me the most. Like, uh, we are we are planning to do uh, this live streaming thing in our own way. Uh, we are actually waiting for Austrian uh, government to let uh, the Austrian uh, citizens and the people that live in Austria to uh, travel actually, without doing the quarantine when they're coming back to Austria. Yeah. Especially Italy, uh, you know, it's uh, it's been very hit, like extremely hit by the virus. Yeah. And um, the north part is still fucked up. It's much better than before, of course, but still. Uh, so, the like all these countries, especially the countries that are at the border, they are these concerns that are completely understandable. It's a little bit complicated to fly Eugene in and uh, so we're taking time but this in during this time for doing this uh, uh, live streaming concert I'm realizing that uh, as a frontman I'm fucked up I'm <laughs> fucked up. it's like the more we wait the more I realize oh shit what how is gonna be yeah. you know how is gonna I, I want to be honest the other day I was uh I took a shower and, uh, you know, I, I was drying myself and in front of the mirror and I tried, <laughs> I tried to, 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 to talk to the people and talk to myself in the mirror. I was like, oh, the next song is going to be 
healing through war. And I was looking to the camera like, uh-huh. and it's, it's fucking, it's a mind fuck, man. It, it is, it is. Uh, it, it is tough. really complicated to get into the, the, any kind of like a mood that you, you just play the songs, but it feels really awkward. And that's the last thing you want to feel when you, you play your music. That's the, it's, it's like, yeah. It's, it is, it is. I know that I know that for you is even is it's already hard to talk in a regular show. Yeah, I I couldn't imagine how bad it was like for you to do that. Um, well, Lo- Loria out. Yeah, I think it's like Loria out. It's uh, uh, since we did did it as a, one of the first bands, we did it differently than bands are doing at the moment. Like we didn't stream the gig because we didn't. There wasn't ready platforms for that. There was no bigger companies uh, like actually doing. I didn't want to risk it because uh, streaming that kind of a, like amount of data might not yeah, go yeah. through well. A lot of bands have already had those problems with the buffering and uh, Insomnium had the problem. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. that's why we did differently. I rented the the venue where I did one of a like a DVD from my, one of my previous bands. And uh, we recorded the whole show with uh, with 10 cameras. I did the full editing and people actually got to buy the whole gig file with some uh, extra like a footage and stuff. Mm-hmm. And they, they they actually owned the file. They, they Everybody downloaded it to their own computers instead of streaming it from anywhere. Okay, so, so the... I did the... Since I did the editing myself, of course, I did it in a way that there was no gaps between the songs so i didn't need to talk okay and since and it, it would have felt i don't know how would have talked to an audience that is not there as, as you know i'm not the the greatest talker on the stage and it, it can become really awkward on the stage also if you you look at the venue there's only the sound guy and the light guy a uh, lot of cameras, and then your bass player on the side is trying to make Man, for, for bands like us, it's not that different <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> I, I would have hoped that it would have been the past. Like I, yeah. I, I've, I've, been, like, I've been there myself, but uh, I didn't want to go back there. Yeah, of course, of course. <laughs> do you remember some, some shows we played together? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do. Uh, it was terrific, man. Very, very... Very, you know, it was let's say uh, at least it was scary. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but the thing is, it's still, it's, it's still uh, even a shitty gig is still a gig. It's yeah, that, of course. You know, yes, uh, yes. You, you get ready in a different way. You you have a different mindset. But when you know, like, like in two weeks, like you said, you start to prepare differently. You train in front of the mirror after the shower. Yeah, yeah. Talk well, to the camera to talk to a camera instead of thinking in your head what are you gonna shout to the audience? Like you it's a completely different way of preparing yourself. I played my best shows when I was alone, man. <laughs> <laughs> Always, you know, when you have three people attending the shows, you deliver the best performance ever. You know, voice like top voice, top guitar playing, you know, super fluent English. And then yeah. when you have like uh, 300 people, you start, you know, fucking up all the time. Like, uh, it's always <laughs> the same story. I, I really hope that it's the same for all the people that play in front. But, yeah. uh, you know, maybe it's just me. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> this uh, great says that uh, I guess you guys are courageous releasing an album in these Corona times. Yeah, you're pretty courageous. But at the same time, as you said, you know, it's not yeah. that... It's not, not the uh, decision we... Only us made it. We already set that in motion like a half a year ago. So it's uh, then you just you just try to make the best out of it when it when it happens. But then again, postponing the album to like uh, September October, a lot of bands are doing the same. So I need to be realistic. Like bands in our size, we would be overrun by uh, bigger bands that are like there's going to be a flood of releases coming in in October November. Probably because uh, what I've heard, a lot of labels been pushing the releases. To and, that moment, yeah. Yeah, if there's a triple amount of releases, that's always a really bad news for smaller bands because there is just no space for you. 
So this is important. I wanna I wanna read it before it disappears. Which album should I start listening to Wolfhard from? This is a new guy, probably a Flashcut fan, and want to start listening to you guys. What's the the album that you think is the best to listen as first release? I I, w- I would say the the latest one, the Wolves of Corellia. Okay, it's, it's, because it resents the this day of the band. So yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. It, it, because if, if that guy is going to be on the next show, when that's going to happen, that's the style we're going to be most mostly like uh, playing. Because there's these are shifting in the music from the first album. Okay. And this other guy, what has been the biggest challenge to front as a band? I, I would say this situation, what we're having now, is, 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 is going to be in the long run also, because... Nobody knows until 2021 or even 22, like where where things are gonna be, how the industry is gonna. And uh, yeah, I think this uh, the forthcoming times are gonna be the biggest challenge for everybody in the music industry. Mm-hmm. So, I, I, think it, I I can't imagine anything in the past. Those have been some small spikes, but this is a wave. So it's. Uh, well, let's say that, uh, for example, for uh, we've been uh, facing like very shitty moments in our in our career, and uh, yeah, probably uh, we were. I wouldn't say we were in a safe position when this all happened because you know things just fell down like so quickly, and even financially was a fuck was fucked up. You know, I, I wouldn't say like okay, yeah, yeah, we are surviving this. You know, it's a party all day. You know. Yeah, we, it's a it's a shitty situation, of course. Uh, but um, emotionally, I think we we suffer some other, like at least for my feelings, some other things that uh, heart, like hearted me a little bit more, like something like that. I don't know. Uh, as I said, I'm uh, I'm a natural born optimist. Uh, maybe I'm dumb. I don't know. Uh, if you want to translate it, you do that. Uh, but um, I think that when this kind of stuff happens, it can be like I always try to see the positive aspect, that the push that it gives you. And since this is so uh, like a general crisis, uh, and it's going to affect like many aspects of our our you know, industry and uh, and the, the whole machine is going to be affected by this, of course. Uh, I cannot say that it's going to be, like, easy to go back to to track. But I don't know. Like, as I said, emotional-wise, when we had, like, very... We had tough moments, uh, emotional and financial-wise, back in the days that kind of trained us to this. Yeah, you know? I know a few of those, and those, yeah, the, the your gear getting stolen in it wasn't. For example, yeah, that that thing was like all of a sudden you wake up and 30 k's are gone, you know, yeah. or uh, like all of a sudden you wake up and you don't have a lineup anymore, and you have to start <laughs> singing, playing guitar after 10 years, you know. Yeah, it's that uh, this kind of stuff, of course, is not comparable to what is happening, but. We felt to be very close to the edge, you know, several times. And we were very close to fall from the cliff, but we kind of managed to survive. And we tried to learn from these times that we have to stay calm and stay very, uh, like, uh, try to stay as cold as possible, you know, like, Try to, to, to stick to reality and don't overthink too much. Yeah, it's, it's, just, it's just like a, how you choose to see things. Do you, is, is the obstacle a wall that uh, you just see as, a, as a, something you can penetrate? Or do you just think like uh, the size of the hammer you need to go through it? So it's uh, uh, three things I need to say that I, I uh, had in my mind while, while you were talking. Dumb people are always the happiest. So it's, it's not a bad thing. I'm, and I'm not, I'm not saying that. I wasn't saying that you it's are. Just that. like uh, oh. they're coming up. <laughs> yeah. I didn't say that you were dumb. I just, in general, <laughs> following up from your saying that uh, <laughs> you're smiling now. So it's uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's not a book. It's another thing that dumbs does. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
the thing is, I guess, like uh, Carl was talking about the kind of like a religion and God and higher power. Uh, my personal beliefs are more like in energy, and you, everybody chooses what what you reflect. Like, uh, and and you you get you get to choose to reflect positive or negative energy. Do you bring something for the people, or do you, are you just like a small black hole with two legs? Mm-hmm. So, like, uh, if you choose to like uh, see more things as opportunities than just the setbacks, then you bring positive energy to others also. You are like a like a force that is pushing. Like the podcast is a good example. Then you figure out things that might help other people that will keep your band uh, on the frame, and then you start doing that. So it's, uh, it is important to, to make, especially in these times, to understand also it's not doesn't need to be a big thing or... It, doesn't matter what it is, just choose the positive one instead of negative always when possible because that's not just you. It's just yeah. the, if you are able to keep your level like on, on a plus side, you are able to reflect that on other people too. And I have to address one question on the on the YouTube because uh, just being serious here, uh, who would win, uh, win a fight, uh, me or Vagelis? And uh, I'm I'm safe to answer it now because he's stuck in Athens. We have a similar situation than Nile. Our solo mm-hmm. star is like at least he's, uh, lives in Athens, and no way he's gonna get get into Finland for a long time. So he probably will forget my answer, and I will survive <laughs> when we. Well, actually, I think they are reopening now. Uh, they are reop- No, I, I I would hope not. <laughs> okay, now you are now. Don't you, tell anybody. Okay, okay, now you are bringing the negative energy into this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, you could just keep your role as a positive guy. I would appreciate because uh, he's a lot bigger than me. Mm-hmm. But well, uh, I, but uh, he and he is incredible in in deadlift. But I would beat him so badly in bench. I just need to remind everybody in this universe. That uh, even though he's posting awesome deadlift videos, there's a reason why he doesn't bench. That's mm-hmm. all I have to say. All right. Uh, okay. Uh, there's a lot of people like asking very weird stuff. And um, constellation of the black light. This one uh, will always be my favorite. That doesn't drink. Bring- that doesn't it's not a good news for the future albums that probably that guy thinks that I'm gonna suck from now on As okay but that's always the same story man this guy asking uh, when you're gonna be back to Mexico as soon as they can yeah well it's, it's, yeah, it's, we will see. yeah it's, it's really rough now in, in, in that area but uh, yeah we it's will now go, start, when starting the bo- exploding there yeah but we will go everywhere when it's possible. Yeah. Now, the whole 2020 is basically emptied. We moved about 80 gigs from this year to next year. And now mm-hmm. it's waiting game. Waiting game to see what are what are we able to do and when. This is a perfect example of how people, you know, uh, like overrate us. <laughs> but Abby is asking. Abby is the girl that did the, the caricature. Uh, both of you, did you even imagine like 10 years ago that you would have uh, what, that you would have the, the success that you have now? <laughs> Which success? <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't see any. <laughs> oh, you have seen some. It's, uh, yeah. But that's, uh, it's, it, it is a completely different, different point of view when you're uh, kind of like the songwriter, the band leader, the amount of work that you put in the, the, the whole band and pushing things forward, you see the whole uh, concept of success also differently. And of course, uh, the, in your social media and with the promo that the label does, they only like show the tip of the iceberg. Mm-hmm. Nobody knows the, the, the amount of work actually you do. So that, that takes yeah. away from the, from the whole concept of success. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. absolutely. I agree. Flesh God is a legendary band, and, and seeing your reaction to that question kind of like underlines you. The amount of work you've probably done for the band also 
you know, it's, uh, yeah, it's, uh, we have to stay, we have to stay humble all the yeah. time, you know? That's so it's, uh, it's the key. So, you know, and, uh, reality teaches you to be humble sometimes. Yeah. So it's, um, I think this is the same guy that, uh, is, yeah, yeah, is the same guy that, uh, uh that loved, uh, uh, Black Constellation is like, I would never, I think, yeah. hate you. Like, okay. Wolf of Karelia is amazing too. Uh, it was more of a suggestion of where to start. Oh. Okay, so it's, uh, you, you see, you have your fans helping you to uh, drive other fans to your music, which yeah. is a great thing that is happening in this podcast, which is amazing uh, that we are creating a kind of new community, like uh, with uh, much more open-minded people, because we, we are inviting every week very different uh, style of metal, different artists. So uh, this helps to, to you know, kind of, it's a place where there's no mm, rule, you know, yeah. especially. Of course, it's metal. Of course, it's this is our passion. But still, you know, you will find gothic and uh, extreme metal and... It's hard to find a pop metal, the one we were discussing with Carl, you know. It's, it's, it's more like bands like Amaranth and stuff like that. That is, is But Amaranth, I like Amaranth. Yeah, it's that, it, it wasn't like, I was just like uh, putting them in the, the category, not like, uh, I do like them. I do like them a lot. And I used to work as a stage manager when they played in festivals in Finland. Mm-hmm. But, uh, but it's uh, that uh, kind of like... Uh, falls into that category of, of pop metal when the music is clearly written around the chorus as it kind of like follows the the but I, I don't know like yeah i think that uh, yeah maybe it's the, the 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 music that they do is very uh, catchy of course yeah. you know but um i don't think it's like something that is uh done on purpose just to sell the music i, I don't think so I, I think that they are very they, they have this taste which is very catchy and uh and people you know love of course like it's more commercial than what we play <laughs> it might be a little bit yeah yeah <laughs> and i'm saying that they like they started playing that style so it would sell more but naturally when the when the music is is uh very much focused around the chorus you sh- as a songwriter you should build the song that mm-hmm. way that it, of course you are yeah. you are going that uh, direction it would be as catchy as possible and uh, I do I think that they are really catchy I, I do like their music uh, I really love their drummers work I, yeah I, so it's a, there's not a lot of really cool things about the band I, nothing negative to say about the band but to me that would be the definition of uh, pop metal, which is not a it's not a bad term in my 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 books. It's just a way to to yeah to, to categorize to, like to give a yeah categorize a little bit. Uh, Renato says it is so good to see metal people such uh, great humans being such great humans. People should be more metal, of course. And I fucking love Veleno. Yes. Uh, Joel says that he likes uh, Slayer and goth music and jazz. Good for you. We need more piano music with metal like Flash God Apocalypse. Thank you very much. Yeah, we're gonna. I'm gonna push Pharaoh to put more piano, like piano solo. So, uh, what are your next? Uh, what What are the plans that you have for the next future right now? You just released the album. You did the this. You just wait for. You just wait for. Uh, you know the 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 old world to reopen and you are gonna start touring or you're gonna you plan to do like other live streaming concerts more like digital stuff or what are your plans uh at the moment there is not really plans we first we need to see what's gonna happen in next few months like what are the plans that we are able to start building up i don't think we're gonna do any streaming gigs we already did one mm-hmm. and yeah, it, 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 it was a really cool thing to be able to do. It's not something I would enjoy that much to do again. And uh, 
I, I lost huge. Good to know just before doing it. Thanks, man. <laughs> you might like you might like it. Yeah. We can talk about that after you've done yours. But uh <laughs> yeah. so it, it was really bad timing because the 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 balance uh, with the work in our band, I do all the music video productions and editing, I do the write wrote all the music for the new album. It partially the, the production and just before the Wolfhard album, I re- recorded and wrote the, like a solo project in the name of Dawn of Solis. So I did two albums in, in four months. Yeah, it's a, this guy, uh, Boyashek, is asking about that. You used to have quite a lot of varied metal projects and now it's Wolfhard and Dawn of Solis. Uh, what's the story behind this? You know, like all these projects that you have. And you think about going back to that core in the future? Uh, I was never. I did, I. I was never in 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 that core. That core. I don't know why. Why saying that? Who knows where, where I'm gonna end up? So I might go back there without we knowing. Should do, there. We even. should. We should do a like a death core band together, like <laughs> Finnish Italian death core band, like yeah. very. Yeah. Only, only breakdowns. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just, the songs just get slower and slower. <laughs> yeah, it's. Uh, <laughs> but uh, uh, I used to have a lot of lot of projects, but uh, my previous main band had uh, some some issues that just created a lot of frustration, and I just needed some different outlets for the music. It, mm-hmm. And there was the side projects, and uh, when the label issues became too complicated it was easier for me to stop to bury the main band and it was also made more sense to clean up the whole table so i ended all those projects 2013 mm-hmm. and that was the same year when the first Wuhan album came out so it was just yeah. clean, cleaning up the table making things more simple and uh just i could uh, get a new labels and focus on one project like yeah. one one thing yeah yeah but yeah, what I was telling before is, uh, yeah, I lost huge amount of motivation for the for any kind of like a music thing when everything got fucked up. You have a lot of expectations always when the album is coming out, and then I know, yeah, yeah. So that that was a that was a quite a big hit below the belt. So still, I haven't touched a guitar, not even once after the, the virtual gig that we did. So you are kind of like. Unconsciously refusing it, something like that. Yeah, yeah, and it's not like I don't practice guitar that much. I write music with guitar, and it's just I don't have the inspiration. But I started to play drums again, and I've been doing that like as a as a routine now. Like uh, it's going to be like four or five times a week, and then pad training and stuff like that. So I can. You're crazy, man. But I, you know, if you have drums as a hobby, it's it's really really pleasant instrument to play. I know. Yeah. If I know. Have, I, I know now. Now I know. Yeah. <laughs> but still, you know, it's, uh, yeah, but I perfectly feel you. Like it's more or less the same. I wouldn't say that the instrument didn't, like, didn't matter that much for me, but, uh, like, I mean, what kind of instrument you play, you know? Yeah. Uh, but, uh, yeah, for me, at least, the point is writing music. Writing and listening to the music that I write, that I write and have that feeling. You know that feeling? Yeah. You know that magical feeling that you say, "Shit, this is gonna be super cool." You know. Yeah. And uh, if you don't have an inspiration or something like that, uh, like um, that, like inner push, let's say, yeah. to do it, uh, it's very hard to go and grab the guitar and practice. And uh, I play a little bit, not that often. Uh, because of the same reason, you know, I feel a little bit lost, let's say. So yeah. I don't have uh, there's uh, but yeah, uh, we're gonna. I'm, I have to start practicing practicing again, and uh, considering the fact that in a few, I'm gonna have this uh, live streaming thing, yeah. and I have to be able to play and perform. <laughs> uh, all right, so. Uh, Francesco, you seem to be best friends with all the Finnish bands. <laughs> what do you Finns and Italians have in common? Oh, well, actually, tours. We did yeah. uh, we did tours together, yeah. and one of the most 
exciting, a very fun tour we have done as with you guys. Uh, but that exciting is a good word. It's a very good word. Yeah, it's, it was cool. It was cool. Yeah, it is what it is. Sometimes it's totally unpredictable. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but that's a, it, it lasts. The chemistry between the bands also like define a lot. Like the tour can be like you have big audiences and good venues, but if the the chemistry is really complicated, that drains a lot of energy also. So it's a. Yeah, yeah. But as it comes in common, I think the best thing was that we don't have anything in common. The person like the. the yeah, person, we are the, basically the opposite. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. that I think that's why it works so well because uh, Phoenix. There's Met like the opposite attractions. Yeah, it's like a fire and ice. Kind yeah, of. yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, uh, yeah. It was, uh, it was, uh, it was a really cool combination. You, you are very Italian band, let's put it that way. But you are very Finnish band. <laughs> <laughs> you don't speak, you're not even on stage. So yeah. I think that that defines the Finnish <laughs> attitude. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right. So. Uh, Emma say something in French that I don't understand. Okay. Uh, do you know while well, the lockdown? Oh, oh, this Facebook thing is going too fast. Do you have enough times to create new songs or new ideas running out? Yeah, he just said that uh, he didn't touch a guitar, so I guess you didn't write anything. Like no, not yet. I, I just. Focus on the drums at the moment. I will start writing soon anyway. I know myself that well. But uh, there's been a lot of questions in the interviews about like, uh, you're probably going to make a lot of albums now and new music when the, there's a lockdown. But it it doesn't work. I, I don't know any songwriter that was happy about the situation. It's, uh, it's uh, negative. It's, uh, also that you, you have to, when you write, uh, let's say not when you write, maybe, but when you finalize the album. Mm. You finalize the album in with a per, uh, in perspective, you know. So you have that like, okay, I have a bunch of ideas, okay, and now I'm gonna start like pimping and finishing the album, and you start working with these ideas. And while you're doing this, which is more like more or less like a mechanical process, you know, you do it with the purpose of touring, with the purpose of releasing something, and get the feedback from the people and what's over. So this is missing. All this uh, input that yeah. people give you is totally missing. So even if you have like a great idea, like the other day I wrote a cool riff. I do believe it's a cool riff. And I was like, usually I would have uh, started like working that like a lot on that riff, on that idea and come up with a song in like in the next few days. Now it's more like, okay, you have this one. And I'm just postponing. I'm, I'm going to work on this later on. You know, that's that magic thing that uh, push you to to work hard on something and release this. Uh, I I feel better than than uh, the early days of the lockdown right now. I, I feel more productive, uh, but still, it's hard. But that is a really good point because I have exactly the same. It's like a. The, what, the thing that gives me excited and push a lot of energy to the work is like uh, when I get the idea of a song, then I start creating in my head when, what kind of visual video thing would work for this, how this song, yeah. song would work when we play it live, yeah. how would this be the first track of the album. You start building this whole process in your head, and when you are not, you are not unable to do it at the moment. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's all connected and stopped yeah. at the same yeah. time. You are basically stuck on the first level of the game. Yeah. And there's like, it's really hard to get the same excitement because nobody knows, like, yeah, the planning aspect is taken away momentarily. So that um, then it's the, the whole creation is not just like the artistic side. You you think about the, the stuff that's going to follow, the album, the, the whole package. So that is... Um, yeah. Yeah, it's the like yeah. As you said, you are just uh, you, we are stuck uh, on in the first stage of the process. Yeah, yeah. I need to. But take, there's one question in YouTube. Uh, okay. Are you recorded with George Bocos, recruited Vagelis, and then uh, will be touring with Rolling Cries? Is the coincidence or is Rolling Cries an influence Wolfhard? Uh, musically, no. 
Uh, I've been aware of uh, Rotting Fries for a long time. Been listening to their music. I've been touring with them. I did one tour as a drummer for a band from Maldives, which was a weird thing to happen. They, they had a session keyboard player from Finland. They, uh, Marco used to play in Kalama. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, they were check, checking for drummer, and I think Marco told them that I, I might be available, and I, I was a session drummer for the tour, and the Rotting Christ was the headliner. Mm -hmm. so we told them, I, I, I get to know George, the, the previous uh, uh, guitar player, and he had a studio in Athens. I don't know why, but I love Athens. I'd be actually, I when I was composing one of the Wolfhard albums, I lived there for two months. Mm -hmm. I just went in the place for myself, and I did uh, some recordings with George, and uh, then I saw the second lineup of uh, Rotting Christ with Vangelis and, and George. This is a funny thing. It's, it's uh, Greece, the, the land of the, the ancient gods, and you would think that there would be more guys with names like uh, Vangelis and Thanos and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah. Every other guy seems to be George. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's, because I, Gorgos is another a very common name there. Yeah, it's like yeah. Francesco in Italy. Yeah, and then the Georgios, they actually they they turn it into George. I know a lot of Georges that are actually, but it's a uh, every 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 second guy is George. I know so many. <laughs> like literally, literally half of the guys I know in Athens are are called George. That's just, okay. That's, but yeah. yeah, at least it's easy. It's easy to remember the name because sometimes it, for me it's very hard to you know re re yeah, recall are, the names uh, every time. It, those are really long names sometimes. But uh, the George, yeah, yeah. George, George is simple. Yeah, but, but yeah, I, I saw that, that the new lineup, and uh, when I saw Vagelis on stage, I just had to write him in Facebook like if. If we ever need a session guy for bass, would you be available? I wasn't aware he was a guitar player also. Mm -hmm. And um, so it's just a coincidence. But it, mm -hmm. I, I, it's just like basically involving a lot of uh, previous members of Rotting Christ in my work. But, uh, All right. So like a couple of questions more. This, this two from Great. It was like, uh, where did you get the band name Wolfhard from? If you have like a specific story or is just something that you really liked? There's not that big of a story behind. I just wanted to, I, I like the, the, like this kind of lone wolf, like mm -hmm. idea and figure and vision quite a lot. And uh, since the, there's not many different words to describe. Mm -hmm. a lot, a lot I, think, I think it's very cool. Yeah. It's a very cool name. No connection to Moonspell. No connection to most, but I, I've got that uh, Do you get inspiration from Finnish folk music or Finnish cultural tradition for your songs? Or perhaps an hour in the sauna, <laughs> he says. She said. Yeah, the thing is like, well, well, sauna is so common thing in Finland that nobody yeah. gets inspiration because it's, it's part of being a, being a Finnish. Yeah. But, uh, but I, the Finnish folk music is is... It's not, no, I don't get in inspiration from either. Finnish na na nature is, is quite a big thing. I do spend a lot of time in nature. So that, I think a lot of Finnish metal bands get a lot of influence from the, from the fact that we have the lakes and the forests. Uh, I think Amorphis underlined it really well with their legendary album, Tales from the Thousand Lakes. Mm -hmm. So that, that, is the, that is the Finnish... Finish like where the inspiration comes. And I think the mentality. We are quite gloomy and silent people who reflect that in the music. Like a lot of lot of the, there's certain melancholy in Finnish music. Until until you go until you go to Athens and then you become like more Mediterranean. Yeah, yeah. So you know when then next time you, you write an album, uh, you should move to Rome for a couple of months. <laughs> and so basically, you like after two months of work in Rome, you will have like two or three riffs, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> All the other time is like party <laughs> yeah. or traffic jam. Two things. All right, bro. Listen, as uh, already, we are already five minutes out of time. Okay. It's unbelievable how fucking fast this this thing called time runs. It's yeah. unbelievable. You know? Like uh, I 
it's, it's always it's always a pleasure. It's always a pleasure to spend time with you guys. But really, likewise. And like I like I told this is like I told before we went online. This is probably going to be the best forty five minutes of the day. I I wasn't lying. It was a, all right. It was a good time. So listen uh, again. No plans for the future, but you have a merch, uh, like a merch store, like an official merch store where the people can buy uh, well, that for. Actually, we have a. I have a different approach on that. I think it's like I don't feel that this is a good time to push people to buy stuff from the band. We are kind of like in this uh, pause moment. We are constantly planning stuff for the next year, so it's not like we are offline or anything. But. Uh, we don't. You, do, you do not. You don't have merchandise now. Like we only, have, we only have the napalm store. Uh, okay. Because we were supposed to put the the web shop up, but this thing is too complicated now to bring anything up. So I rather let just people. But I want to. I want to tell you something. Like in this moment, uh, this is the only way that the fans have to support the band. So. Yeah. Even if you, uh, I really, uh, I understand, I really respect your idea of not pushing people in hard times like this to buy. But you're uh, technically, uh, it's the point of view that is different. You're not pushing people and uh, uh, you are giving uh, something back. Mm -hmm. Like it's not a, an offer or stuff like that, yep. you know, like it's a different thing, you know. So I, I, I think that... Uh, a lot of people would be very happy to have the chance to buy directly from you, like some merchandise. So uh, right now you have the Napalm uh, store, but maybe yeah. in the future. Yeah. It depends. Yeah. I, I first, I need to just wait what's going to be the next plan. Like we talk about the, the whole songwriting thing. Everything is part of the bigger plan. And that opportunity to plan was taken away. So... I would rather, we're going to just wait and see what's going to happen, then things are going to happen a lot more from our direction also. But there's nothing new coming from us in the merchandise-wise or music right now, because we kind of just, basically we lost an album. It's just uh, something. No, nah, this is not true. Yeah. <laughs> this no, is no. our Finnish soul coming out with all the negativity <laughs> and like gloomy, like, come on. It's not wasted at all, at all. And yeah. I think I do believe that people are enjoying the fact that, uh, as I said, as this girl said uh, several times, you've been courageous, and uh, I think that the numbers, even on Spotify and everything, are very good. So yeah, they are good. Don't yeah. lie, don't lie. They are good, and it's uh, it's a good to have this conversation with the positive Italian. Okay, yeah, yeah. So now you're gonna be super happy for the rest <laughs> of the night, man. Yeah. yeah. All right. So thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, again, I want to do like another shot to the, uh, for promotion for Abby. Uh, so Abby, she's the girl that does the caricatures. She's a very young artist from UK. Support her on patreon.com slash Abby Stabby art and uh, on uh, Instagram. Uh, so it's time to go. I want to thank you. I want to thank Carl from Nile for being such great guests and super uh, humble and uh, super nice dude. Thank you very much. Uh, I want to thank you for following us, for commenting, asking stuff, being so many. I've seen like a lot of comments everywhere. And um, so if you like the show, uh, when you are watching the show, just a screenshot the show and tag us so we can spread the word even more. And in the next few weeks, we reach episode number 10, which is great, but we want to go uh, on for a little bit longer since the lockdown is going to be a little bit longer. <laughs> so uh, I think we will, we will have many Saturdays together. And uh, I want to thank Mike from Nuclear Blast for helping us setting up uh, the uh, YouTube channel. Uh, I want to thank Ferro, uh, my keyboard player, who is uh, behind the scenes directing the whole thing. And uh, he's the nerd. He's the nerd. He's taking care of the, all the technical stuff that I don't even understand. Um, and again, if you want to support us, our merch store is still the same. Shop.flashcutapocalypse.com. You go there, you buy whatever you like. We released the tank top this week. So uh, if you want to support us, 
Go there, buy stuff, it's much appreciated. Listen to music on Spotify, buy albums on Nuclear Blast Store, uh, buy Wolfhard albums, buy Nile albums, and support all the bands as much as you can. Uh, and if you, do, you are broke and you don't have money, just go and listen to music and grow the community, metal community, which is important as well. Thank you once again. And what else? See you next Saturday. Stay well, take care, wear masks, wash your hands, and be metal. Ciao. Kitos. Kitos. <laughs>